Hi YouTube, I am Dr. Ed Swift, and he wanted to do a video with me today to talk about my pregnancy. I came to him with a little bit of low back discomfort um, that I think started mainly because I'm, pre I'm pregnant. I'm now 21 weeks and I have a lot more going on <laughs> and a lot more uh, pressure on my low back. So I came to him just to let him know that I was starting to feel a little bit of I guess it would be classified as pre-sciatic nerviness in my right leg. Um, because I'm married to him, he's taught me very early signs to look out for concerning an overstressed low back. So I started to have some tightness in my calf and just a little bit of achiness in my foot. So um, he worked on me a little a couple days ago and we concluded that, you know, my low back from the baby and just my own body and posture is overworked right now. And when you're pregnant, all of that, um, all of that becomes a little bit worse. So today he wanted to do a video with me just to show how we deal with uh, low back issues when you're pregnant and some of the common things that we do to resolve um, those discomforts. Your side, top leg, bottom leg straight, top leg straight too. Bring his top leg straight also. There we go. Breathe in deep for me. Exhale. Other side for me. Let's go face up. So as usual, we're just trying to get all the parts of my wife's back moving. The more forward the head goes, the more tension the lower back takes. So getting the neck moving, getting all the pieces in here working, uh, getting all 24 vertebrae working helps to balance the spine and not let any one part do too much work. Do we need to say anything about being on my back this far along, or how, like, are we at that point that... No, we're not there yet. The only, the only issue with being on your back for a long period of time is that if the uterus is so large that it's pressing on the abdominal aorta, and obviously if that was happening you would feel, you know, a lot of coldness in your legs, perhaps, you know, your feet are going numb, you know, peripheral symptoms down your legs, but even with a healthy aorta, it really shouldn't, you know, even with pressure on the aorta, the heart can still pump blood to your lower half of your body, even with the mechanical compression of the uterus on the abdominal aorta. So yes, if, if you're, especially into your th third trimester, if you're on your back and you're noticing your legs are going numb or they're going purple, get off your back. Um, or if you're feeling even a pulsating, you might, you might feel the abdominal aorta, you know, pulsating a little bit as the pressure on the uterus presses back on the aorta. Um, yeah, you need to be more oblique or on your side, uh, but there really isn't any other reason that you shouldn't be on your back. There we go. There you go. A little piece. Chin up, relax. Focus right there. Over here, like a little bit. Can you see that pretty good? So the tension in the neck just causes 
lactic acid. Lactic acid is cellular exhaust. It has no usefulness in the body and needs to be bound to oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. And so common question I'm getting is, you know, it's not toxins. I'm like, well, it's, it, it's a waste. It needs to leave the body. It doesn't belong in the body anymore. Like any, like every tissue in your body, when new tissue is made, the old tissue has no more usefulness. It needs to be transported out. And old tissue from the inside is a toxin. It's, it's waste material. It needs to leave the body. And so this, is, this acidity in here from tight muscles, contraction, is causing soreness. There's a restriction in the joints. All right, we're just going to try to loosen up my wife's middle back a little bit more lower back from the extra weight of the baby and uh, the muscles are having to work harder, joints are working harder, there's more mechanical load on her lower back than ever before so we're going to try to loosen up her middle back a little bit more not just by adjustments but by massage and then the nerve has been a little bit irritated in the soft tissue here on the side so we're going to try to see if we can clean that out a little bit more so I'm going to see if we can get a little bit more movement here there we go, there we go Just trying to soften up these joints a little bit. So as usual, one side of the back is stiff and then one side of the back is overworked. The left middle part of my wife's middle back is what I've always found to be the tighter part. And then the right lower takes extra burden and gets overworked. So on this right lower part, there's been a lot of inflammation from it being overexerted. The nerve is sitting in that tissue. That's what's causing some of the pain going out her right leg. So the nerve acts by summation, it adds up all the things that are influencing it. Some of the things irritating the nerve are the mechanical compression, some of it's the soft tissue inflammation, some of it's just uh, hormonal. You can have the progesterone is loosening up all the ligaments in her body. You know, worry and stress sensitizes nerves. Cortisol is a sort of a stress hormone and gets high in the morning and then goes down throughout the day so sometimes your pain will change throughout the day and you won't be able to find you know exact reasons well there's other hormones that are playing in effect that cause nerves to fire more easily or you know take a lot more stress to get them to fire and so the you know it's hard sometimes to pinpoint what exactly is it that's causing the symptom it feels better in the morning or it feels worse in the evening you know our body isn't static the hormones are moving up and down throughout the day. The disc is made of 70-80% water and so in the morning it can be swollen and the swelling of the disc can hit the nerve. And then throughout the day it can get compressed and you know then it can herniate more or it can herniate less. Depends on what you're doing, what positions you're in, if you spend a lot of time sitting, if the joint swells. So a lot of variables are in play to what actually finally gives somebody pain. Earlier in the week we worked on this area. The nerve, nerves that leave your lower back go right through this tissue and so bruising of this area irritates the nerves as they travel down into your glute and then ultimately down your leg. So 
inflammation of this area is what's causing pain. So we want to, part of this is circulation. This area is so stiff, it's not getting good circulation. That's trapping lactic acid in the area. So we want to work the tissue, help clean the tissue out, get blood in there to help get the soreness out of the tissue. Yeah, a little lump right here. That's got to get out of there. That's sort of the upper part of the muscle that then attaches on the iliac crest. All right, so a lot of restriction here on her right side. That same muscle attaches on the iliac crest. Tightness in here is you know, on both ends of the muscle. So this is the top part, this is the bottom part. I'm trying to just lengthen this. It sort of provides like a vice grip. So the tighter this muscle gets, the more it contracts. And it's just really tight right there. Whew. And you probably can see that that's, that's a lump right in there. Part of it is when the when you're sitting or bent forward, this goes posterior or backwards. So as the head, as your head goes forward or iPhone posture, te techno posture, this pops out right in here, and that's what further makes the muscles contract to stabilize the area. The alignment is not correct, and then the muscles sort of detect that misalignment and then try to prevent it from getting worse, so they contract. And so every evening, the wife has been doing her stretches, trying to keep her posture aligned. Stretches on her back that actually push here, call them mirror image stretches, so we call them extension stretches. So the movement of the joint is actually what causes an imbibition or a self-cleaning to the area. So the more restricted this area gets, the more it's unable to self-clean itself. That's where you're seeing all this lactic acid that's been trapped in the area accumulate. In any patient's spine, the ribs provide a sort of a foundation or protection of the chest to guard our organs. And so relatively, this area is almost always going to be tighter than the lumbar, which doesn't have ribs. My, my, my wife, historically, since I've known her, this is where her back likes to bend the most from previous injuries and, and school and posture. Um, so again, this area is overworking. This area is sitting on the sidelines. And the baby just adds more to this. So everything that's mild becomes medium. Anything medium becomes moderate. It sort of just amplifies everything. Yeah, I tell my patients, don't be disheartened, you know, after, if you had a deep tissue work, sometimes you, you've stirred everything up, and then once everything, once your body's had a chance to go in there and wash, all, wash out all the toxins, lactic acid, it'll feel better the next day. That's the <laughs> epicenter of it. Ouch. All right, that's good. One of the final stretches that I ask pregnant women to do, they have multiple benefits. One is to actually get the baby's head down. Two, it also helps take pressure off the lower back is pelvic rocking. So assume the position. <laughs> so you're gonna arch up like a cat. That helps to loosen up that middle back and then let it sink in. You wanna be doing this routinely throughout the day. This should give you some relief in your lower back. It also helps the baby's head, like I said, to sink down. Pelvic rocking. 